Welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about momentum and I'm going to talk about how to conserve momentum and the different types of uh, types of momentum you can have, so the collisions you can have. So in the previous video I talked about the equation momentum, uh, m times v is momentum and it's always conserved, it's one of those things in the universe that's always conserved. And what I'm going to talk about is different types of collisions, so I'm going to talk about elastic I'm going to talk about inelastic and I'm going to talk about explosions. So first off, I'm going to talk about elastic collisions. And the important thing about an elastic collision is not only is um, momentum conserved, but so is kinetic energy. And I'm writing kinetic energy is here as Ke. So this is also, get a better pen for you, this is also conserved. Okay, so I've got a two kilogram block moving at 10 meters uh, per second and it's going to hit this other two kilogram block that is not moving. Afterwards, the block that I threw stops and this two kilogram block moves onwards, okay, much like a snooker table. And I want to know the speed it's going to be moving at. So how I actually solve these kind of formulae and how these solve these questions is first of all, I do like labeling my blocks A and B here. Okay. And what I do is I write A and B start and end. And what I do is I calculate the momentum individually for both of these objects. So, my momentum for A to start with is 2 times 10, which is 20. At the end, I have zero momentum. And at the start, B has zero momentum. It is not moving. So if I add these up, in total, I have 20 kilogram meters per second of momentum, which means that at the end, I also must have the same amount of momentum. So this is two times the velocity. And I know two times the velocity must equal 20, which of course means the velocity would equal 10 meters per second. Now this is an elastic collision and I can prove this by looking at the kinetic energy at the start and at the end. Okay, so the kinetic energy at the start or before the collision is going to be a half times 2 times 10 squared and that is for A plus, that's not moving, it has no kinetic energy. So that's going to be 100 times 2 divided by 2 which is 100 joules. At the end, A is not moving, and my object is a half times 2 times 10 squared, which again equals 100 joules. It's conserved, therefore this is an elastic collision. So that's how you first of all start momentum questions, but also solve for um, elastic collisions. I'm now going to introduce you an inelastic collision. And I have, the difference between elastic and inelastic, as you may guess, is that the kinetic energy is not conserved. Uh, there we go. So, let's actually do this one with you. I'm going to label my blocks to start with, A and B, A and B. And the interesting thing is, is I don't know, I know it's moving, but I don't know in which direction. So what I'm going to do is we're going to arbitrarily put in an arrow going that way, but we might find out with our signs that it might be going the other way. Okay. I'm going to put a big question mark here. 
So, do it again. So, start and end, A and B. So, momentum at the start is 10 times 2, which is 20. And for this one, it is 0. So, I have 20 kilograms per metre squared of momentum. At the end, I know it's going to be 10 times something. Okay. My B is 30 times 0 0.5, which equals 15. And I know that this again must equal 20. So I have 10 times something plus 15 equals 20. So 10 times my question mark equals 5, because I take it away. And my question mark equals 5 divided by 10, 0 0.5 metres per second. And as you notice, this is a positive number. And I've taken this as a positive number. So I know my object wasn't moving this way at all, was actually moving this way here and at 0.5 metres per second. So it was moving at the same speed as this object here. But let's change this up a little bit. And no, I'm not. firstly, I'm going to prove that the kinetic energy is not conserved. So at the start, my kinetic energy is 10 half times 10 times 2 squared, which is 4, plus 0. And that's going to equal 10 divided by 2 times 4 is 20. So this is 20 joules here. And at the end, I have a half times 10 times 0.5 squared plus a half times 30 times 0.5 squared. And that equals, if I grab a calculator, 0.5 times 10 times 0.5 squared plus, so what was that? That equals 1.25 plus 30 times 0.5 times 0.5 squared. 30 times 0.5 times 0.5 squared is 3.75, which in total equals 5 joules. So as you can see here, energy is not conserved. I had 20 at the start, and now I only have 5. But where does this energy go? Well, the energy will go into the collision, so it can be wasted as noise, heat, all sorts in between the collision that's happening. This is the difference between an inelastic and elastic, that the elastic collision is energy before and after is always conserved. In an inelastic collision, the energy is not conserved. Okay, so even though momentum is conserved, energy is not Energy has been wasted into other forms like heat or sound. Now, what I was saying here, I was going to change up a few of the numbers to give you an idea of what could happen. Okay, so I'm going to grab the eraser. I'm going to rub this out here. Okay, and I'm going to change that this left at one meters per second instead. And I want to know the velocity on this object. And again, I'm gonna put it this way, because it's kind of like a gut feeling that collisions, they would rebound off each other. So let's do this again. Start and the end, A and B. A, two times 10, so that's 20 and B is zero. And at the end, I have 10 times the question mark plus 30 times one. And that again has to equal 20. So 10 times something equals 30, oh no, 
plus plus 30 times 1, which is 30, equals 20. 10 times something equals 20 take away 30, which is minus 10, which means my something must equal minus 1 metres per second. And this minus sign means it's going in the opposite direction to this object here. So this one would be moving at minus 1 metres per second there. And that's how you do an inelastic collision. My last type of collision is not really a collision at all. It's an explosion. But again, you can use the conservation of momentum to do this. So this is a cannon experiment. And to give you the idea, kinetic energy, of course, is not going to be conserved. Because if you think about it, at the zero, nothing's, at the beginning, nothing is moving. And at the end, everything is moving. And this is because things like chemical energy is converted into kinetic energy. So again, it is not conserved. But I'm going to talk about how to solve this. And this is where those negative and positive signs become important. So again, I'm going to call the ball, I'm going to call the cannon A and the ball B. And I'm going to do exactly the same as I've been doing before. A and B start and end. So A, the momentum of A at the beginning is zero because it's not moving. The momentum of B at the end is also zero because it's not moving. This means I have in total zero momentum. If I look at the end, my cannon, whoops, wrong way around, I do apologise, so that's going to be B, that's going to be A, my cannon, which weighs 100 kilos, is going to be moving an unknown velocity. And my ball here, my cannonball, is going to be moving at 5 metres per second. And it weighs a kilo. And I know that those two must equal zero, added together, because the momentum is conserved. So 100 times my question mark, plus 5 times 1 equals 0. So, 100 times by question mark, plus 5 equals 0. 100 times by the question mark equals minus 5. And my question mark equals 5 divided by 100, which is going to be 0.05, I believe, but I'll just double check. 5 divided by 100, 0.05. And this negative sign is important because it means it's going to move this way. And any people who have done, seen a cannon move or have done any like uh, work with the paintballing guns or BB rifles, etc., you can feel a recoil when you have these explosions happen. So that is elastic, inelastic and explosion collisions that you can do, see in momentum. And also looking about a way how to calculate uh, momentum and talking about how energy is conserved or not.